Now these are some of the uh, values of the impact economically and socially in Sri Lanka. Once again, they all are approximate values. Uh, a recent report issued by the FAO very clearly ranks IUU fishing by Tamil Nadu trawlers in Sri Lankan waters as hotspot number seven. And that's an eye opener to the EU as well. They take away a huge amount of uh, fishing from us, nearly 100,000 metric tons per year. And according to our data, Indian trawlers have made 290,000 odd illegal fishing trips to Sri Lanka. That's from end 2009 till the last month. And out of these numbers, over 15,000 have been positively identified, the registered numbers, and same has been communicated to uh, Indian officials on the other side. Now what options do we have? The first and foremost that I feel is arrest and detain Indian trawlers. Because that has shown a great impact and that this reason why they resist arrest. We have roughly about 130 trawlers as at now and proved to be very effective. We will release the fishermen but if you don't have a trawler to come back, you are going to lose heavily. And then there was a suggestion of fishing on mutually agreed days but it was turned down. I think most of the Sri Lankan fishermen are not in favor of that. Then we have to ban bottom trolling. Unfortunately, Sri Lanka or India yet to ban bottom trolling. We talk against bottom trolling, but we are yet to do it. And once again, this narrows down to livelihood of the fishermen. So we need to encourage fishermen to go to the deep seas and start fishing rather than destroying the marine environment. The Indonesian option, what does Indonesia do? Whenever they find an illegal whistle in their EZ, they simply do this. Set some explosives, blast it, send it to David John's liquor, locker, in our terms, to the seabed. I'd be more than happy to have this option in my hand, but I am not the person to do that. Still, and there was a discussion pertaining to quota uh, management system, like what the New Zealanders are doing. But I think, once again, the Sri Lankan fishermen will not favor this option. Then we have to impose fishing marshalling, what we did before 2009. We used to check each and every boat leaving the country and coming back at our security posts. What we do now is basically when we have reliable information and intelligence, we used to check. Because fishermen said the Navy is harassing them. And I think they outmaneuvered us very tactically and they get rid of it. So they have the leeway to do that. As we all agree, this should be discussed on a table like this. So this discussion should fo focus on three areas. Impose complete ban on bottom trolling, respect the IMBL and other rules and regulations. They are international, internationally accepted ones. But for me, to Sri Lanka, the Sri Lanka Navy and the Coast Guard, what matters most is the relationship that we have with India. We have a very strong relationship with India, so this cannot be hampered at any, any cost. And that's the reason why this issue has been dealt so delicately, so diplomatically, and the navies on either side, Coast Guards on the either side of the IMBL, act very sensibly. Because the slightest mistake that we do out at sea can create havoc. In concluding, I would like to say, maritime security, peace, and stability means so much to us. A country that suffers nearly three decades, we achieve that through so many sacrifices. We do not have a visible enemy out at sea now, but that does not mean in any way that our seas are safe and secure. Our challenges are more complex because we are obviously fighting invisible enemy, and poaching issue ranks number one in that list. Because our key pillars of future Sri Lanka will definitely lie on maritime security, peace, and stability. Well, I could not find a better quote to end my presentation than um, take a quotation from Commanding Officer Mori, who uh, commanded the Coast Guard Station Mandapam in 2012, and I quote, the fishermen who were equipped with GPS know fully well their location of fishing, but they were willfully crossing the border, taking a risk. When the Coast Guard vessels stopped them at the IMBL, they take a deviation to get into the Sri Lankan waters. Now, this is the funny part. After crossing the IMBL, they even used to wave at us as we cannot chase at them across the IMBL. I unquote. And that's the sad state of affairs. If we are not willing to take immediate actions, we are heading for great disaster. Thank you very much for your patience.